only piece yourself back together now What's your vision? Hello, what is up? This is Marcus The and welcome to my math crash course. This is the first episode in this series and today I'm going to be introducing trigonometry and in the next episode I'm going to be doing questions related to trigonometry. So yeah, let's get this started with. So here are the basics. This is a triangle of lengths O, H and A. What do O, H and A represent? O is this line is the side of the triangle that's opposite theta, this angle right here. A is the one adjacent to it, and H is this extremely long one, the longest side of this triangle that is opposite the 90 degree angle. Sine theta is opposite, the opposite line divided by the hypotenuse. Cosine theta is the adjacent line divided by the hypotenuse, and Tangent theta is the opposite line divided by the adjacent line. Tangent theta is actually sine theta divided by cosine theta. Because, take a look at this. If I put a divide sign here, sine theta over cosine theta equals to O over H divided by A over H. As you can see, you can just cancel these two H's away and you get O divided by A, which is tangent theta over A. And hence, sine theta over cosine theta equals to tangent theta. This is extremely important if you want to do questions related to trigonometry and you must remember this by heart or you can always just, you know, draw this triangle and write it all down again but that will waste quite a bit of time so I recommend you just memorize it. Next, sine theta is cosine 90 degrees minus theta. And how do you get that? Sine theta is actually the opposite over the hypotenuse, right? And so the opposite line for theta is actually the adjacent line for 90 degrees minus theta. And that means A over H, which is cosine, right? Cosine theta equals to adjacent over H, adjacent over hypotenuse. And therefore, sine theta equals to cosine 90 degrees minus theta theta. Cosine theta, well it's the same. It's actually A over H, right? For cosine theta, then for 90 degrees minus theta, it is actually the opposite line from this divided by H, which is actually sine 90 degrees minus theta, and hence this. Tangent theta is actually, you know, just divide sine by cosine, and you know, cosine, you get cosine uh, 90 degrees minus theta divided by sine 90 degrees minus theta and you get 1 over tangent 90 degrees minus theta which is cotangent 90 degrees minus theta and hence that's it for the basics of the ratios of the triangle. The other formulae is actually in the second page of the exam paper which is this. You just need to look at it while you're doing your exam and you can use this to your advantage. But I'll touch on that later in the next episode because right now I want to talk about the cast diagram. C-A-S-T. A means all the angles in this quadrant are, I mean all the trigonomic functions in this quadrant are positive. Only the for s, all only the sine functions in this quadrant are positive, and for here only the tangent functions are positive, and over here only the cosine functions are positive. Because, okay, let's just touch on the because here. In the first quadrant, take this to be the x-axis and the y-axis, right? So over here, beyond the y-axis is positive and beyond here is negative, same goes for the y-axis, above is positive and below is negative, right? You have drawn graphs before, right? So using this formula, you can get this, because everything is positive, sine theta equals to opposite, which is positive, hypotenuse is positive, yeah, 
opposite is positive and hypotenuse is positive. Therefore, opposite of a hypotenuse is positive over positive equals to positive. So many positivity, like a mat. So for the cos negative for the second quadrant, the x, the x values here are negative, and actually the hypotenuse here is actually always positive because this is actually a length of a line. So yeah, this is always positive. And over here is negative because it's to the left of the x-axis, the second quadrant, but it's still positive for the y-axis because it's still above the x-axis. So some things have changed here. The adjacent line here, the value here is negative. Yeah, as you can see, all the a's become black. And therefore, you just sum it in and equals to this, equals to negative. Tangent theta is negative and only Therefore, only sine theta is positive in this quadrant. In this quadrant, that means the angle is from 90 degrees, I mean, between 90 degrees and 180 degrees right here. Because, you know, you start from here, start from the bottom, now you're here. Yeah? Yeah? Get any reference? Okay, for the third quadrant, you start from here, and you go all the way around here. So this is the third quadrant between... 180 degrees and 270 degrees. So here, the x axis here, I mean, this part is negative because it's to the left of the y axis, and here it's negative because it's below the x axis. So using this again, you see uh, the opposite, taking this to be theta, the opposite, uh, the opposite line becomes negative, and the adjacent line becomes negative, and here all this stuff becomes black. And therefore, sine theta is negative, cosine theta is negative, but tangent theta is the opposite over the adjacent, right? Negative over negative equals to positive, because math. So for the fourth quadrant, between 270 degrees and 360 degrees, which means one full circle, you get this. The x-axis is finally positive, but the y-axis is still negative, and therefore the opposite becomes negative. So you just sum it in, and only cosine theta becomes positive. And so, yeah, these are the trigonomic graphs. You can use this to your advantage by, you know, summing in all the values and shit. Like, if you cut this here, you can get A, S, T, C. T, C, because it doesn't contain S, right? So these parts are negative, and here, you just cut it here. A, this part is positive, and S, T, these are not C, right? Over here, C, positive. Over here, A, positive, S, negative, T, positive, and C, negative. So, you can just, you know, use the, the graphs as a reference for the cast diagram. Yeah, easy, easy, but... You have to know how to draw these graphs first. The sine graph and the cosine curve, uh, they both look similar but they are different. The sine curve starts from 0 while the cosine curve starts from 1. So, yeah, these two are pretty similar because they look the same. And, no, they don't act the same. They look the same only. And the tangent curve though, oh, combo breaker, starts from 0. But then, there's an asymptote at pi over 2. So, the reason for this is actually because tangent theta equals to sine theta divided by cosine theta. And, okay, look at this. When tangent theta equals to, I mean, when tangent, when theta equals to pi over 2, sine, sine theta is 1. Cosine theta is pi over, I mean, cosine theta equals to 0. That means... 1 divided by 0, and therefore, that is infinity, and therefore this one goes all the way up, but never touches the line here. There is an asymptote here at pi over 2. And next, you need to know the tangent curve, because it is the most important thing, thing here. You need to know about the asymptotes, and you need to know how to draw the line. Make sure the line, make sure you practice drawing the line such that it doesn't, touch the asymptote, otherwise it's wrong, and make sure it doesn't bend away from the asymptote, or 
parallel to the asymptote. That is something you have to look out for while drawing the tangent curve. So, if you forget how to draw any of the graphs, all you have to do is remember to sub these values, I mean either one of the values, if you're using radians it's pi over 2, if you're using degrees it's 90 degrees, so in this case I'm using radians, as you can see all the pi over 2 and stuff. So you just sub it into sine, so sine pi over 2 equals to 1, so you just plot that here, well over here is 1, and then you add 1 to this, sine pi over 2 plus 1. It's actually less than 1 if you type it in, into your calculator, so you just plot this point right here, and then you do pi over 2 minus 1. So you get this sine pi over 2 minus 1 is less than 1, 2. So, as you can see, you can see this curve over here, and by memory you should know that the curve looks something like this, so you can just sub it in here, and bam, you can get that line. So now, I'm going to go through tangent theta, yeah? So you just do it the same, but tangent pi over 2 is infinite. And infinite because you can't show it on a graph, right? So you just do a dotted line here. This is the asymptote of the tangent theta graph. And now you just do the tangent pi over 2 plus 1, and you realize it's less than 0. But you know that at the asymptote, it goes you know, all the way from infinity, then it goes to negative. Yeah? So you just put the points here, with high up. And then the same goes here. Pi over 2 minus 1 is more than 0, so you just put it here. And then, you know, because there's a symptom here, you know the graph must bend away from here, right? And where does it bend to? Here. Because, you know, the trigonomic graphs are very nice numbers. So, yeah, it's either infinity or 0, right? You can just sub in tangent 0 equals to 0, and bam, you can just connect 0 here, here. And you can just connect this here and after that it's smooth sailing just continue the pattern and bam you're done hashtag swagalicious free hand drawing using a mouse and yeah and yeah that's it for today so this is my introduction to uh, trigonometry and yeah in the next episode i'm going to touch on trigonometry questions good luck have fun